And I think I'm going to bring a, a, a different perspective because I don't really work with Jewish media. I'm Jewish, I'm Israeli for 30 something years, but I work mainly with foreign media. I also work with Israeli media, with one specific program, but mainly I work with five languages in different countries of the world. And I'll try to bring that global perspective of the Jewish media. You know Ephraim Kishon, I'm sure you know all of you. He used to say that Israel is a country that not only believes in miracles, it relies on them. And I believe the Jewish people and the Jewish media is exactly in the same situation. Jews, and we must remind that, we lost one third of our people only 75 years ago. And you as the media, you're fighting, you're helping to fight so many problems, so many things. You know, two, years ago, two, two weeks ago I, I had the chance of interviewing the Pope and in Rome, in, in the Vatican, in his place. And we spoke about anti-Semitism. And you could see how relevant, how really that's a problem that is still there. As you all know, but many times when I speak with colleagues, non-Jewish colleagues, they are not so aware of the problem that I'm sure that you, as Jewish media, deal with in a daily basis. When we were, I was interviewing him, after the interview I saw he got a letter from uh, the church in Spain and they were telling him that there was a priest at that morning quote in the media, Mein Kampf, and saying, you know, openly, all these barbarities, all these things that are written there as it was news from that day. So the Pope was telling me, you see, what do you think I must do with these phenomena? That's why I'm here, he said. I want to fight against things like this because anti-Semitism is a sin. So we were talking about problems, Jewish identity, survival, anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism. Uh, Jews fight also for so many things. They try to adapt, to adapt themselves in their societies and to survive in a moment where a tsunami is affecting the media in general because we are, you are media also. And the media is changing. Who knows how your newspapers will look in 15 years, in 10 years, in 20 years, and not only your newspapers, any newspaper, how it will look. We must think about that also, because the world is changing so, fi so fast. The media is changing so fast. We are becoming more and more multimedia. Are we trying to find a solution and understanding that we live in this tsunami, that we must adapt, that we must be more multimedia, that we must use more internet, because if not, maybe we are not going to be here soon. Some days ago, I, I gave a lecture in a university in Barcelona, and a young boy, a young student called Daniel, came to me after the lecture, and he said to me, look, I come from a Jewish family. I live here in Barcelona. I'm Spanish, I'm Catalan, he said. And he said to me, you know what happened to me after the abduction of these three soldiers? The students in my class came to me and they said, why did you conquer the West Bank again? Why did you enter Nablus and Ramallah? And he said, me? I was here in the library. <laughs> Giovanni Sartori, that if you didn't read him, I recommend you should, said, that really the homo sapiens is becoming the homo videns. What defines my sensibilities, my priorities, what I decide and what I want is what I see in my screen, in my computer, in my TV, or in the media in general. That's why maybe you have more foreign correspondents here in Jerusalem in a neighborhood called Ramat Rachel than in the whole African continent. You knew that? Between 1,000 and 1,500 foreign correspondents live here in Israel in a permanent basis, and they cover this area, not only Israel, also the Palestinian territories, and now more and more also the neighboring countries, which are, as we know, burning. And all of them cover this for 400, 450 different media. This affects 
the way Israel is seen, the way the Jewish people is seen abroad. And that's why I believe that the media, where I work at least, two, three days after the abduction of the three youngsters from Gush Etzion, they didn't want to inform about that. They were busy with other things. They were busy with the World Cup, with Iraq, with the jihadi wave in Iraq, which is really important, but this was like a small event, a not relevant event. And I believe the Jewish media has an important role also there. Because sometimes the general media is hijacked by political correctness. And I believe the Jewish media has there a huge role to play. Because we know that today, and I'm finishing, Shmuel. I already got my answer about the deadline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm very proud to be the first one. You know, without a media war, I teach media war in the IDC, so I'm very inside that. I think it's really important to understand that a military campaign, a diplomatic campaign, an economic campaign can't live without a media war. A computer or a TV camera are weapons, sometimes lethal weapons even more than an F-15 or a tank. That doesn't mean the Jewish media should deal with propaganda. I believe it should be, first of all, information. But if there is something that the Jewish media should do, is bringing the Jewish-Israeli perspective, which is not there many times in the general media, or it comes too little, too late. And that's it. Thank you, Marshall. Sure.